Hello and welcome back to CIS 165 JavaScript Programming. I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. So we're going to shift gears a little bit in that we've been working with a lot of JavaScript up to this point. Now we're going to work with some HTML because what we want to do is create nice looking interfaces for our program. It's hard to believe, but we're getting close to the end of the semester. So we need to start thinking about the final project. And our apps, our programs, they, they work well, but they don't look that nice. So we're going to talk about something that will help us make our programs look really nice really quickly. Let me show you the end result. And then we'll do it together. So we're going to create this sort of about me project. This is all HTML. So we have an interface divided into sections. There's a navigation bar at the top that we can click. Did you notice that cool animation? I can go back. It's animated. I can make a pop-up. So a little bit about... This is going to be like an autobiographical app. Growing up information, information about hobbies. We can do this side panel with more content. We can make these little pop-ups here. All of this is something called jQuery Mobile. And it's based on JavaScript, but really we're just going to be writing HTML and using a few attributes of the HTML to create all of these cool animations and interfaces. So that's what we're going to do together. I'm going to set myself up with a lesson 14 folder. Where did the other seven lessons go? Um, check Blackboard for that answer. So I'm going to copy the basic project into lesson 14. I'm going to open Visual Code and set the folder to Lesson 14. We'll do the usual in that we set up these little bits of information. This is jQuery mobile intro, jqm intro, and fill in your comment block. Introduction to jQuery mobile for creating interfaces. This will be due on November 21st. All right, so one of the first things we need to do is add a new meta tag. This meta tag will make our project mobile friendly because you saw in the example that I was showing you in Chrome, it looked like a mobile device. I resized Chrome to look like a tall, thin mobile device. So we need to be mobile friendly. On line five, we're going to create a meta tag. The name of this tag will be viewport. And the content of this tag will be initial scale equal to one comma, user scalable, equal to no, and width is device width. This is setting up a meta tag so that our project looks mobile friendly. The viewport is the, visual, is the visible area of our project, of course. And we're saying that the content in the viewport will have an initial scale of 1. It'll be zoomed in 100%. We will not allow the user to zoom in and zoom out. And then the width of the project will be stretched to the width of the device, whether it's a web browser or a mobile device. Next, we need to add three libraries, two jQuery mobile libraries and one jQuery library. Technically, two JavaScript files and one CSS file. We'll get those from the web. If you go to your web browser, you go to jQuerymobile.com. This is where you can educate yourself on all aspects of jQuery Mobile. This is a touch-optimized web framework. 
So I would highly recommend you visit this site and browse all of the sections, specifically the demo section, to fully understand what jQuery Mobile is and what it does. In short, it lets you create an HTML5-based user interface quickly. So the way we'll use it, we could download the code, but that's a little bit more trouble than it's worth. We'll just connect to the online version of the libraries. So you would get that under Custom Download on the right side. On the first paragraph, it says download or link to CDN versions. That's what we want. We want the online versions of the libraries. You can click there. Scrolling down in the section of 1.4.5, in the subsection of copy and paste these snippets, this is what we need. We need a link to this style sheet and a link to JavaScript files. So I'll select the first line and copy that. And back in my HTML file, I'm going to paste this before my custom CSS. I want the jQuery Mobile 1.4.5 file to load first, and then my custom styles can override it if necessary. Next, I want both lines 2 and 3. Those will go before my custom JavaScript in line 14. So line 14 links to the jQuery file, jQuery 1.11.1, .1, minified, JavaScript library, and then jQuery mobile 1.4.5 minified JavaScript. Now we are using a slightly different version of jQuery than the one we used on the previous activities, and that's fine. That's what jQuery mobile requires, so we'll just follow along. So with those three libraries, we are now able to start to create the interface that I showed you. And this is going to be pretty much HTML. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space there, and I'm going to delete our starting h1 tag. We don't quite need it yet. The way this will work is that every screen full is a section. The home section, the hobbies section, the growing up section. These are all sections. And we have an HTML5 tag for that. Section. So open section tag, close section tag. We then add an attribute data role equals page. This section is a page full of information. This needs an ID attribute of home. In order for us to link from one screen to another, one section to another, they need a, uh, a unique ID. And this ID, of course, is just a plain old CSS ID. But we will see via jQuery Mobile, it has the importance of being an anchor to link between sections. So then I'm going to create a header block. HTML is tags with pairs. And so we've got the header tag pair. And that is this top header area where we'll see about me and the navigation buttons. So in header, I'll start off with an H1. Let's say about me. I'll do the navigation in a moment, but if I save that and check the result in the browser, we have something going on already, a little bit of styling. It's not the plain old basic HTML, black and white. 
It's got a little styling so far. I'm also going to pull my browser a little bit tall and thin, something like that. So now header needs to be upgraded with its own data role of header. And with that simple little change, you see that the about me has become centered. It's been divided from the rest of the content. It's already being styled. And that's happening because we're going to use several data attributes. There's data role, data transition, etc. There are various data attributes. Now data attribute is HTML5, but data role is jQuery mobile. And so this has a meaning because we are connected to the jQuery mobile CDNs. We want to make sure that the header stays stuck to the top of the screen because actually, as we scroll up and down, the, um, the header may actually scroll away, and I don't want that. So another attribute over to the header, data position fixed. So that's going to get fixed to the top of the screen. In addition to there being a header, there is also a main content area. This one is the article tag. And this one looks a little bit different in that we have a role, not a data role, but a role of main, and then a class of UI-content. It's just the way it is. This is a unique one. Article is going to have these two attributes, whereas sections and headers and footers and all of that, they often have a data role. Here we will have role and class. I'll create an H2. And I'll write my name. This will be your name. The result is that my name appears. It's already being styled a bit. Let me add some further styling. To the heading 2, I'll add a class, ui-bar, space, ui-bar a. Now ui is a shorthand for jQuery mobile. You will often see some sort of data role, which is jQuery mobile. You will often see a ui-something, that's jQuery mobile, just like we had ui-content. That's jQuery mobile. So by adding these two classes, make sure there's a space between both classes. We've added a bar class and a bar A class. Adding these two will then give us some more styling, like that. Looks good. Next, I will add a paragraph. I will further style this with a class of ui-body, space ui-body a, space ui-corner, dash all. So here there are three classes. There are three jQuery mobile classes that are further refining the plain old paragraph. What I want to display here is an image in this paragraph. I have a placeholder image you can borrow, but you'll want to use your own image eventually. So that's found under http colon slash slash vmcink.net slash victor dot jpg. This will have an alt attribute of my name. And if we see that, my picture will load up in a nice little white box from my website. That white box is UI body, UI body A, UI corner all. If you're curious, I can change that to UI body B, and then I get a different style. I'll put that back to A. And I have corner all. There are four corners. There are four rounded corners. I have other kinds of corners I can create, of course. 
you can look them up on jQueryMobile.com. I want to display this picture on the left, and then on the right, I want to display some text. So I'll add a little quick inline CSS to the picture via the style attribute. I'll say float left semicolon padding 5 pixels. It'll give me a little bit of, bit of breathing room because next is some text. I'll write here, I'm a college instructor. I teach a variety of classes like JavaScript, Android apps, and social media. So that is text then that I'm going to display next to my picture. The picture is floating to the left of the text. There's a little bit of space there, 5 pixels. If I need some more room, I can put 15 pixels, for example. And then I'm going to have some more breathing room around the picture. Maybe I really only need a little bit of space to the right of the picture. Padding is giving me padding on all four sides of the picture. I only need padding right. So now there's some padding to the right of the picture and the default padding on the left, top and bottom. In this section, I've got a header area, an article area. Next, let's add a footer area down at the foot of the design. That needs a data role of footer and a data position of fixed. So it gets stuck to the foot of the document. And in there, I'll create another heading this time heading 4, because the very, very topmost heading should be a heading 1. Then we've got headings inside of the article, 2, and I could have 3. And then the last heading, 4. And there I'll write copyright with the copyright symbol 2016. The result is that I get a footer at the bottom of the screen. So that's one screen full of content. I want another screen full of content for hobbies. A screen full of content is defined by a section. So after my home section, I'm going to create a new section. It also needs a data role of page, and it needs a unique ID. I'll call this Hobbies. I'll need another header with another data role of header and another data position of fixed, so it stays at the top. Create another Heading 1 tag. This will be hobbies. Outside of the header, I create an article. With a role of main. And a class of UI-content. So it looks just like before. But this will be different content, a different screen. H2. We'll say that one of my hobbies is computers. We'll fill in this main article content in a moment. We're not going to put a footer this time, just to have a different design. I'm going to save it. And if I then run my results, well, hobbies exists, but there's no way for me to get to it. There's no button anywhere in the About Me screen to get to the Hobbies screen. So let's create a nav bar in order for us to be able to click and go to the other screen. Because it exists. We've created a new section. It just doesn't show up until we get to it. 
So back on the home section in the header area, let's create a nav bar. After heading one, line 16, we will create the nav tag, which has a pair. This is for navigation. It needs a data role. Nav bar. And the way we can create links is by using an unordered list. So this is going to take the, bl the plain old bullet points of HTML and upgrade them via jQuery mobile to a cool nav bar. So we'll start off with an unordered list, a list item of home, and a list item of hobbies. If I look at my results, it's starting to come together. I've got home, I've got hobbies. They don't look like buttons yet. I'm not quite done. I'm going to wrap an A tag around home and hobbies because they need to be active links. They need an href of pound home for the home button and an href of pound hobbies for hobbies. Now that's coming from the ID of the home section and the ID of the hobbies section. Save that. Check results. Look at that. Home button, hobbies button. And look further that if I hover my mouse over the buttons, they get a hover effect all automatically. This is all thanks to jQuery Mobile. Again, the whole purpose of jQuery Mobile is to help us to create a great looking interface quickly. If I were to venture to click Hobbies, there's my Hobbies screen. I have no navigation button to go back. I have one in the web browser. But we will, of course, program a back button soon. At the very least, I'm able to go from section to section, screen to screen. Well, these buttons look nice, but they could look nicer. If I add another attribute to the A tag, we've got href to tell us where to go. We'll have data-icon equals home. And for hobbies, we'll have data-icon equals bullets. What that does is create icons, nicely designed icons that fit in our buttons. jQuery Mobile has a list of about 50 different icons for different purposes, and you can define your own custom icons, of course. But if you go back to jQueryMobile.com and you go look in the demos section, there will be a list of all 50 icons. These are two for the moment. So if I click on Hobbies, it goes to Hobbies. If I click on home, well, I'm already on home, so I'm already on home. We won't, we don't really need to be able to click on home anymore because we're already on home. So we will add another attribute to home. This is a class UI dash state dash disabled. And what this does is it deactivates the home button. It's visible but it's no longer clickable. We don't need to click it. We're already on this home screen, this about screen. With jQuery Mobile, we have a variety of built-in abilities, such as animating. If you notice, there is a subtle fade animation that happens when I go from one screen to another, those screens fade into view. Well, I have other transitions, other animations. To the hobbies link, I will add a data-transition, and let's try one of flip. What flip does is it flips the screen when I go back and forth between sections. I have also slide 
up. That's one word, no camel caps. And what happens is it slides up, slides down. There's about six different animations in jQuery Mobile. One that's really interesting is Flow. What that does is a very extravagant animation of flowing between screens. I'm going to keep it on Flip, but you can look up the other possibilities and choose whichever you like on jQueryMobile.com. So we're seeing that when we go over to the hobby screen, there's a dead end. How do you get back? Yes, there's the web browser, but if we're on a mobile device, we might not have a back button. So we're going to set up a back button on the hobbies section. I'm going to scroll back down to the hobbies section. In the header section, we will add an attribute data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. This jQuery mobile attribute will create a back button. Now when you test this, make sure you test it, make sure you reload it from the home section. I'll explain why in a moment. But if I reload from the home section and click hobbies, then I've got a back button. Very nice. So I can go back. I could create this whole nav bar interface in hobby section, and that would simply be taking the nav block, copying and pasting it into the section block, and just changing it a bit. But to show you a different way to do it, I'm doing a simple back button. Now what I'm saying about refreshing when you're back on the home screen, I'll show you how things could, could get broken here. So I'm in hobbies. I'm going to change the text. I don't like it that it says back. I want it to say a different custom text. So another attribute. Data dash back dash btn dash text equals. Now I can write any text I want here, such as return. Instead of the button saying back, I want it to say return. The problem is that if I'm on the hobbies section and I refresh it, the button goes away. And what I'm getting at is there's nothing to go back to. I've refreshed the browser at this point, so there's no back history. If I'm in the home section and refresh it and then go to hobbies, now there is a back history and now the back button works. So sometimes there's these quirks with jQuery mobile. It's safest to refresh your work when you're on the home section. But anyway, there's the return button. I want to fill out the content of the hobbies section. I want to list a few hobbies. And then I'm going to get fancy because I want a side panel to appear that swoops into view when I click it. So I started to explain some of my hobbies are computers. Let me add a few more hobbies here. A brief explanation of my computer's hobby. I'll simply say My first computer was an IBM compatible 8086 from Laser Computers. It was a really terrible computer, but uh, it started me off on my path. Another hobby is programming. So simple paragraph to explain a little bit about programming. I enjoy HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Lately, I've been getting into PouchDB. We'll explain what PouchDB is in just a moment. And lastly, I'll say, if you haven't realized it by now, my other hobby is comics. I'll say I've been a comic book fan since 1987. My first issue was Amazing Spider-Man number 266. So to see that result, again, if I were to refresh at this point here, my back button would break. 
So I should refresh on the home screen, and then I can see the results. Now, I want to tell people what PouchDB is. I want that to be an active link, and if they click on it, they'll get a simple pop-up that explains what's PouchDB. We can do all of that through jQuery Mobile. Our setup is that the word PouchDB needs to be a link, and then we set up what will be displayed. So PouchDB, I will wrap the A tag around it. The href will be pound pop pouch. I'll explain that in a moment. Next we have data-rel pop-up. Data-position to window. And finally, data dash transition we'll do slide up all right so what's happening here is this is a plain old link but we've done a couple of things we're linking to something inside of our project a a sort of subsection called pouch pop it doesn't exist yet so this won't work yet we then have the jquery mobile data rel meaning the relationship of this link to this document is that it's a pop-up. I want to position this pop-up to the window, what we're currently looking at, and I want the pop-up to slide up. That's part one of our setup for this to work. Part two is we then need to create this pop pouch element. After that last paragraph before the end of article, we're going to create a plain old div. We'll then add a data role of pop up a class of UI dash content because it's displaying content and an ID of pop pouch. So we're calling the content of this div when we click on the PouchDB link. And what we will have it display on screen is the JavaScript database that syncs. PouchDB is something we'll talk about in this class later, which is a way to create databases with JavaScript. So if a person is not familiar with what PouchDB is, they will see, okay, PouchDB, what is that? If I click on it, I get a pop-up, the JavaScript database that syncs. I can then click elsewhere to close it. Do you see that animation slide up? We have slide down, and that slides down. So we have a variety of animations to choose from. And that's opening up the content from the div. That content is not visible until we click. What I further want to do then is list more comics. I want to show a list of my top three favorite comics. I want to do that through a side panel. On the left side of the project, I want it to swoop into view when I click. So, continuing my paragraph where I mentioned comics, I'm going to break the, the paragraph into multiple lines and say my top three comics. This will be a button. And we have the ability via jQuery Mobile to create buttons. We need to first wrap an A tag around the text href of pound panel comics, which doesn't exist yet. I don't have that content to display yet. Data role of button. Upgrade this plain old link to behave like a button. Data dash icon 
I'll also put an icon onto this button of bars. If I check my result, I get a button with a rollover effect, an active link with an icon. So that was a plain old link, but with jQuery mobile, now it's a nice looking button. It doesn't do anything because we haven't created the panel comics element yet. We'll do that now. So we're referencing something called panel comics. We need to create it. Panel comics is content related to this section, but it exists on its own. Until we click the My Top 3 Comics button, it should not display. So after the article, we will create a new element called Aside. That's an HTML5 tag, which we then upgrade via jQuery Mobile. We give it a role attribute of panel. It needs a unique ID, which is panel comics. When we click that button, line 45, show us this panel. This will have its own independent content. And I'll say here, my top three comics. Let's see what that looks like so far. Refresh my code. My top three comics button in the hobbies screen. Look at that. Look at how it slides over. There are three different slide animations for the side panel. This one pushes the original content out of the way to display the new side panel content below. Here's another way we can animate it. So we add a new data role to the aside. I will add this before the ID because remember I like to have the ID or the class as the last attribute of an element. This will be data-display. We're going to display this as an overlay. The difference here is that you click the button and it overlays on top of your existing content. So you can choose whichever you like. And there's one more. Off the top of my head, I forgot what that one's called, but you can go look it up on jQueryMobile.com. And the content that I want to display here is a list of some of my favorite comics. So all of that content there exists in the aside. So back to our code, we've got aside. I'm going to set this up in that we have these heading twos that will display my number three comic, something, with a paragraph of a little bit of explanation, something. And I'm going to save myself some effort with a little bit of copy and paste. I want number two and number one. So I'm just filling in some quick content here that I will pad out in just a moment. But this is to show that we can have a whole world of content in this side panel like this with pictures and so forth. But I'll just keep it simple with text. So for number three, I'm going to say I hate fairyland. The purpose of this comic or the plot of this comic a little girl falls into fairy land and is trapped for 27 years trying to get back. She's now a little crazy. Number two is animosity. What if all the animals of the world suddenly gained intelligence and speech. Humanity is no longer at the top of the food chain. And number one, Spider Gwen.
in an alternate universe Gwen Stacy was the one bitten by the radioactive spider and Peter Parker became the lizard so just some content to populate the aside that could have text I could have video pictures etc but we've got a side panel all from plain old HTML with an animation with a design properly aligned and so forth jQuery mobile one more thing I want to do with the project is create another sort of interface. This has been a full screen interface as well as this one. I want to create a pop-up interface. I want to pop up so that it shows more content in its own little window, a dialog box. We can create a button just like we saw before, which will do that. Or I'm going to put a button up on the header on the About Me area. So I've got my header area of my home section. H1, then the nav bar. After the nav bar, I want to display growing up. That'll be a button. We saw that we can create buttons with the A tag. The button needs an href to link to someplace. It'll link to the section I'll call IB. I'm going to put a data icon of user. And what we get at this point, if I check my result, is a button that says growing up. It's on the left side, it has the icon. I think that's looking pretty cluttered. So all that I want is the the icon itself. And I want to move the icon to the top right corner of the nav bar, the header, even though I wrote growing up after the nav bar and after the heading one, it still appeared as the first element. So we need to fine tune that. First, I don't want to display the text. Again, it's getting cluttered. So we'll say data dash icon POS equals. Now we usually use icon pos, icon position to position an icon, left, right, etc., and so forth. But we can also use icon pos for no text, meaning don't display that growing up text. So now it's just the icon. But I want the icon at the right. That's where class ui-btn-right attribute comes into play. So the button has been moved to the right. I want to click that button and make a dialog box pop up. Before I make the box itself, I will add another data-transition attribute of pop. I want the dialog box to pop into view. Which dialog box? The one that we're about to create called IB. This then will be a brand new separate section the other bits of content have been content related to parent content. The aside, for example. Aside is related to the hobby section, so it's in the hobby section. The simple pop-up that we created for PouchDB is related to that PouchDB link, so it's still part of the same section. But this new section of content of IB, I want to display a little bit about where I grew up. That's a complete different sep section conceptually. So that means I need a new section. I've got a home section. I've got a hobby section. Let's make a new section. I'll write this at the end. So we've got end of section there. Create a new section. A new section of content. Data role. It's a page full of content. It has the ID of IB, so that when you click the button, it goes to this section. But I also want it to behave like a dialog box. 
So we have another attribute of data dash dialog equals true. Make this behave like a dialog box. I'm going to put some quick content in here just to show you what it looks like. This is not complete at all yet, but I want to just show you what it looks like. If I refresh that, I've got that um, growing up button. I click there. I'm going to have a pop-up appear that notice all the other information gets blanked out and it only displays that new content. It's not complete yet, but that's what we're going for. That's different than the pop-up we did here in that the underlying parent content is still visible. This one will hide everything to only focus on the new content. The new content is that we need a header again. Data role, header. This doesn't need a data position fixed because it's just automatic when it's a data dialog element. We'll add another h1. I'll title this growing up. After the header, I need the article with a role of main and a class of ui-content. With this setup, the dialog box now will behave more like a dialog box. Like that. It's got a close button built in, the header at the top, the content at the bottom. Again, this all that we're working with is plain old HTML. But because of data role, data dialog, these various data attributes, jQuery Mobile upgrades them to something cool, new, and interesting. What I do want to display is some content. I grew up in Imperial Beach. So I want to display a picture and some text. I'm creating a paragraph here and then the image tag. I've got another image for you to borrow, but for your own project, you'll use your own. So over on my server, vmcinc.net slash ib.jpg, alt attribute, this is Imperial Beach, and a little inline style, simply because this is a very large picture. So I want to force it down to 100% the size of the container. That looks like this. So the picture of our Imperial Beach shows up here. And then I want to display a little text below it. I'll say, I grew up in Imperial Beach, California. It's known as Put a little emphasis here. The most southwesterly city in the continental United States. Close the emphasis and period. So EM creates emphasis. It's a basic bit of styling HTML styling. And what happens is it's just italics. So there you go. We've got our pop up here text, picture, close mechanism built in with the animation. Pop. We could change the animation, it automatically animates in reverse. Did you notice that when you went to hobbies, it flips, and when you return, it flips? oppositely, panel animation and everything. Well, the way that this is working is jQuery mobile. If I were to delete the jQuery mobile style sheet and the jQuery library and the jQuery mobile library, my results 
would be this plain old HTML. Everything that we wrote here in a basic sequence. There's the about, there's the nav bar, there's the growing up icon. There's all of the home section from the heading one to the footer. Then here's the hobby section, computers, programming, etc. There's the pop-up, the JavaScript database that syncs. Here's the side panel content. Here's the growing up dialog box. All of that then is upgraded by having the jQuery mobile JavaScript, the jQuery JavaScript library, and then the jQuery mobile CSS library. With those three references, this then becomes that. A quick way to create a very nice interface. I've been looking at this in Chrome in a tall, thin window. If I maximize like that, it looks okay. It's stretched out and it still fully works, but it's all stretched out. This is eventually going toward a mobile-friendly project, a mobile device project, a project that I can open on a mobile device like on a website or an app. You may have noticed that I said that that I teach classes in Android programming. If you're interested in that, send me an email. But I teach how to create apps, Android apps, iPhone apps, etc. And in order for, the, for your projects to look good on a mobile device, they need a mobile interface, like jQuery Mobile. So I was displaying the project in a tall, thin browser. But Google Chrome has a cool emulator for mobile devices, Android or iPhone. The way you get to that is by going back to the developer console. So if I hit F12 to open my console, you should see then a strip of icons where we've got console. And the second icon is a mobile device icon. This is the toggle device toolbar. What happens here is if you click that, our interface our project then becomes responsive mode. View our project in responsive mode. Well, we can fine tune that at the top where we've got responsive, change that to a Galaxy S5. So now our project looks like it's on an Android device. I've got also a Nexus 5 and look at that. It even has like these buttons that are a little bit more like a Nexus. I have also an iPhone 6, for example, that's how it would look on an iPhone 6, on an iPad. And I have other devices that I can activate if I go to edit. I have a Blackberry, uh, an LG Optimus, a Kindle Fire, etc. Various Nokia devices, let's say a Lumia 950. So if I add that, now I've got a Lumia 950. So I can test my projects on various mobile devices even if I don't have a mobile device. So I recommend testing the project either in a tall thin web browser or by activating the device preview in the developers console. If you'd like to learn more and I'm sure you do. You want to go to jQueerMobile.com and digest everything that's here. There's still a lot to learn about this, such as how do I change the colors? How do I change some of this alignment and icons and so, so forth? We don't quite have time in this class. I just want to show you the tip of the iceberg. And the rest of the iceberg is at jQueryMobile.com. If you go to the demos, for example, and you go look at the jQuery Mobile 1.4.5 documentation, I can go here and say, Okay, what are the possible icons that I have to work with? Under the CSS framework icons, here's a list of all our possible icons. An alert icon, that's data icon equals alert. I have a calendar, data dash icon equals calendar. I have all of these built in icons. What about transitions and animations? It's all found here. So based on jQuery mobile, you're going to create a project like this. Check Blackboard for the full details. But this is going to lead us toward our final project, which will be incorporating jQuery Mobile, 
all the JavaScript we've been talking about, and a brand new concept called PouchDB to create a database. So this has been Victor Campos for CIS 165 JavaScript Programming. See you next week.